Hey, good morning. It's Jason again from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. I'm returning to my series on the old garden roses, this time to talk about the centifolias and the mosses. And before we get started, I'd like to encourage you to turn on your closed captioning. That's the button on the bottom of your screen that says CC. That way, if I don't have the pronunciation quite right on these French or Latin names of roses, at least you'll have something to go by in the captioning below. All right, let's get started. In many ways, the centifolia is the quintessential old garden rose. The large, sumptuous, globular roses painted by the Dutch and Flemish masters and still grown and prized today in France for its exquisite perfume. Like the other old garden roses, their origins are a bit confusing. Roman historians Pliny and Theophrastus referenced a centifolia or hundred petal rose in their writings. It was clearly not the same rose, but this reference confounded modern rose historians. Reverend Pemberton, who himself was instrumental in breeding the hybrid musk roses, referred to the centifolias in his 1920 volume as amongst the oldest roses in Europe, lumping them in with the Gallicas and Damasks. The real centifolia is much more modern. The first verified records of the centifolia we know today were crossed and selected in Holland around the year 1600, and over the next century or so, the Dutch introduced over 200 varieties. These are beautifully commemorated in the paintings of the so-called Dutch Golden Age of art. The centifolias were in fact a complex hybrid of multiple classes of roses that would have been widespread in Europe by this time. According to the genetic studies, these parent classes included the Damask hybrids, the Gallicas, Rosa Moscata, Rosa Canina, and perhaps even the Albas. It's an interesting thing that such complex hybrids could have been developed in a time before even the basics of modern plant breeding had been well described by science. The anatomy of flowers wasn't understood until around 1700, and early pioneering work on plant genetics wasn't begun until nearly 1800. Yet a full century and more before all this scientific work, the Dutch breeders of the centifolia roses, by whatever techniques they were using, gave birth to the very profession of hybridization, as one of my sources put it. In flower, the centifolias share some characteristics with their parent species. Once blooming, in spring and early summer, a color range from white through deep dark pink, and a wonderful, strong and complex scent. Where they differ is in their extremely high petal count, forming heavy, full, rounded flowers that would bend back onto their petioles and even weigh down the arching stems of the shrub. And here are some examples. First here, I give you Redoute's rendition of the Centifolia Rose, probably commissioned from the gardens of Empress Josephine at Melmaison. Next up is Fantine Latour in soft pink and still quite widely grown in the gardens. This is a beautiful garden shrub. This next picture is Rose Bolata, also known as the Lettuce Rose, I guess because of the resemblance to a head of lettuce. Another illustration by Redout, White Provence. This one is Petite de Hollande. True to its name, the shrub is only about three feet tall and wide, which is much smaller than the other centifolias. Here I have Parvifolia, also known as the Burgundian Rose, this one the smaller variety. And finally, from the later hybrids, Robert Le Diable, which is uh, sometimes classified a Gallica, but I prefer to call it a centifolia bred deliciously dark and complex in color. Well, I think the story of the centifolias would be interesting enough all on its own, but wait, there's a plot twist. You see, around the year 1720, they found a sport mutation on one of these roses that had a mossy covering growing on the outside of the buds and stems. Well, it wasn't moss. It was actually a part of the epidermis of the rose, a proliferation of the scent glands. And this soft covering, if you feel it, it's sticky. And if you smell that uh, scent, that fragrance off of the sticky resin, it's somewhere between apples and pine needles, at least to my nose. This sport mutation is still widely grown in gardens today under the name common moss. When breeders were finally able to breed the moss gene into other roses from around 1810 onward, they became quite a fashion in Europe. This enthusiasm peaked over the next 40 years or so, and then fell by the wayside as hybrid perpetuals and hybrid teas began to dominate. Here are some examples of the moss roses in pictures. The first one up is William Lobb. It's quite heavily mossed, a bit thorny too, and a very vigorous grower 
quite unruly in my garden, but look at the moss on those buds and that dark color. Next up is Marie de Bois in mid pink, very rounded and only lightly mossed, much more in character like the centifolias. The third one up is Chapeau de Napoleon or crested moss, and that distinctive cresting around the flower buds is quite unlike all the other moss roses. Very unique specimen. Up next is Nuit de Young. It's dark colored like William Lobb, but much smaller and easier to manage in the garden. In lighter pink here, here's Rose de Mieux. And finally up, Madame William Paul. And as one of the later mosses uh, in, towards the end of the 1800s, this one has some re-blooming characteristics. That ends my summary of the Centifolia and the Moss Roses. Thank you so much for watching. And for those rose geeks who stick around right to the end of the video, I always like to leave a tidbit of information, and here it is. That Moss Rose gene remained attractive to contemporary breeders well past the golden age of the Moss Roses. So in 1930s, Pedro Dot added it to his breeding program and came up with a rose called Golden Moss. In the 1950s, Frank Skinner here in Canada made a rose called Moss Man from those same genetics, and Ralph Moore in the 80s uh, made another stab at it and came up with the miniature roses, Fairy Moss, Scarlet Moss, and others. So the story of the moss may not be completely over yet. All right, thank you so much for watching again, and if you have any questions or comments about the Centifolia and Moss Roses, please leave those below the video.